All right, this is Go Math Lesson 9 3, and we're talking today trying to understand how to use these tables that we learned how to make in uh, 9 2. So, where do I go with this information, right? So, if I had some kind of equation that would be like 2x equals y, and I look at my in out table, right? And I would have uh, 2x equals y, and this will be in, which is also my independent variable. That's the part that determines where the rest of this is going to go. And then my out, which is my dependent variable. So whatever comes out here depends on what goes in here. And I'll give you just a couple in here, right? So 2x equals y. So if my in is 2, 2 times 2, and that would then be 4. If my in is 5, this would be 2 times 5, and that would be 10. And if my in is uh, 6, that would be 2 times 6, and that would be 12, right? So this is my independent variable. This is my dependent variable. So now I'd ask myself, um, let's say that uh, Mr. Fosnot is going to do twice as many push-ups as Mr. W does, right? So I look at this will be the number of push-ups that Mr. Fosnot does, and that's going to depend on how many push-ups Mr. W does, right? So 2 x equals y. So x would be the independent variable, and this would be the number of push-ups that Mr. W does. And then y would be the dependent variable, and that would be the number of push-ups that Mr. Fosnot does. And that depends on how many I put in. So if I put in 2, he puts in 4. If I put in 5, he puts in 10. If I put in 6, he puts in 12. And they may ask me something like, OK, you have a rule here. You have an expression or an equation that can solve this. And you have an in and out table. You know the relationship between x and y. And they may ask you, how many push-ups Mr. Fosnot will do. So if Mr. W does 85 push-ups, I can now solve this information, right? So I know what Mr. Fosnot's going to have to do depending upon how many I do. So let's say if I do 85, I have my expression 2 times 85. And I'll keep it standard with the asterisks there, equals 170. Now I know that Mr. Fosnot's going to have to do 170 push ups. So let's go to your book and check that out. First one we have here the table shows the amount of water pumped through a fire hose over time. If the pattern in the table continues, so there's our expression or equation, how long will it take a firefighter to spray 3,000 gallons of water on a fire using this hose? All right, so I have to look at what's the relationship between x and y. And they don't call them x and y in here, but I know that it is one or the other. It's in, then out, right? So if I have 150 gallons pumping per minute, the amount of minutes that I'm letting the hose run will tell me how much water is pumping out. So the amount of water I'm pumping depends on how long I let the hose run. So I need to find how long it would be for 3,000 gallons of water. I can actually set this up as a ratio. So if I know I have 1 to 150, and I have minutes to gallons, when I ask myself, all right, Mr. W, I need 3,000 gallons. I need to solve for x minutes. OK, this absolutely works. I could cross multiply, and I get 150x equals 3,000. And that's something I can solve. Or I could say, how, how many times can 150 go into 3,000? Uh, what I find out is 20. 20 is the case. And even if I do it this way, 150 gallons times some number of minutes. That's the thing I don't know, right? Times some unknown number of minutes will equal 3,000 gallons. That's this expression right here. That's the equation, excuse me. So at that point, I have x equals 20. So 20 minutes based on my table here. So I find an x and a y, and I make the connection. And let's go ahead and look at just one more. All right, keep that going, keep it going. Here we go. Dairy cows, they provide 90% provide, excuse me, 90 of the world's milk supply. The table shows the amount of milk produced by a cow over time. If the pattern in the table continues, how much milk can a farmer get from a cow in one year? 365 days. All right, so. Most of this is filler. I can actually get rid of this. Let's make it a bigger, easier way to 
table shows the amount of milk produced by a cow over time. I know that because it has a label. If the pattern continues, that's an assumption I'm making. How much milk can a farmer get from a cow in one year? That's, there's my question right there, right? So I look at my X and Y in here. They actually do call them X and Y. So X, how do I go from 2 to 50? Well, I can add 48 or I can multiply by 25. How do I go from 7 to 175? Well, I can multiply by 25, but I can't add 48. So I know that I am multiplying by 25. So whatever 25x is equals y. Now I have my relationship here. I could set it up as a ratio and solve it. I could So 2 over 50, which would get me to 1 over 25. So I could say time and milk in gallons. That's 2 to 50. And they want to know in 365 days. And I need to solve for x. So I could break this down. If I cross multiply, I get 2x equals 50 times 365. And I would solve it the exact same way. So what I know now is that 25 times x equals y. And I know what x is. x is going to be my days of 365. So I get 365, because that's my time in days. That's my x right here times 25. And I get 5, 2, oops, 2, 3, 18, 0, 1. Well, 9,125, wow, that is a lot of milk. So 9,125 gallons. So if I can get 25 gallons in a year, the amount of milk in gallons, 50 gallons every two days. So 25 gallons a day for an entire year, that's going to give me a grand total of 9,125 gallons for the year. 9,000 gallons, that's a whole lot of information. So when I'm solving these and I'm applying the table that I know, I find the relationship between x and y. And I find a way I can solve it. I can write it as an equation, just like we have been doing. right? What do I do to x to get me to y? And then fill in the gaps. Or I can set it up as a ratio, because we've looked at that since unit 2, and we can connect it that way. All right. So the important thing is to step back, look at the information you're given, put it into a format that you can understand, take your time, and then solve it.